Let's go ahead and stand up together this morning. As you're standing, feel free to either grab somebody's hand or reach up to the Lord, stretch out your hands to the Lord. We want to connect today. Let's pray together. Thank you, God. Would you thank him out loud today? Thank you, God. Praise you, God. We declare your praises today that you are a good God. You are a good Father. That's who you are. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you promised to meet all of our needs. Lord, I thank you that even in the times where we're struggling with feelings or struggling with just being tired and feeling like there's not a lot of us left, that you are there to love us, to care for us, to uphold us. You are faithful. Thank you for that today. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in our body right now. I thank you for what you're going to do today. Thank you for this time that we have to connect with you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Let's clap to the Lord. Thank you.
you thankful for his amazing grace in your life today say amen. Amen. amen hallelujah i'm just so thankful that his word instructs us to draw near to the throne of grace that's what it says so if you are struggling today if you are going through something that is making you not sense the presence of the lord or if you are not receiving his love today, if you are feeling distant from the Lord today, whatever it may be, know that we are instructed to come to his throne of grace with confidence. That's what the word of God says, Hebrews 4, 16. So we come to you, Lord, today in confidence so that we can receive your mercy and find grace in our time of need, Lord. Lord, I thank you that we can run to you. And instead of cowering and running away and being afraid that you draw us, it's your kindness that leads us to repentance. You draw us to your very heart, Lord God. And so we run to you and we receive your forgiveness and we let you heal the brokenhearted we thank you that we can receive your mercy and your forgiveness. And Lord, your mercies never run dry. Your word says that they never come to an end and that they are new each and every morning, Father. And I thank you for lavishing your mercy upon us that it regenerates each and every morning. And we reach out to you and say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy that covers all. We praise you, Lord. And as we sing this next song, just worship the Father. Don't run away. Run to him. Seek him while he may be found. Surrender to him. Let him cleanse you and let let him um, bring healing to your heart if you need that today and receive his mercy receive his grace today that's available for you Say 
grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to the
night I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus fled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to Praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you today that you were the one that earned our salvation. You are the one that paid the price. There's nothing that we could do. We thank you, Jesus, that you became that free gift of grace to us. We thank you for paying the price for our sin. Thank you for suffering for us. Thank you for rising again from the dead and defeating death so that we could put our hope in you. Thank you for the freedom that you give to us today because of your forgiveness. Lord, we trust you. Forgive us forever trusting in ourselves or looking to other things to take your place. We want you to have your rightful place in our hearts and lives today. We give you all the praise, you all the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Isn't God good? He is so good. I love it when we get a chance to worship together. I hope you'll take advantage of that Spotify uh, opportunity. Download that. Go to that. Worship on your own. But then when we get to worship together, it's really, uh, really special. And actually, I felt like it took, we were, I felt like we were in worship for like five minutes, which is awesome because it means I have like 55 minutes to preach. Holla. I'm just kidding. I'm, on, I'm back on real time. I'm back on earth's time. Um, I wanted to share with you this morning, if you had not already heard that Pastor Bjorn's mom went home to be with the Lord this past Tuesday. And what I want to say of Martha is that she was a wonderful, wonderful woman of God and that she was ready to be with the Lord. So hallelujah, we thank God for that. We thank God for Martha's life and for her example. I, I also want to say thank you to everybody who helped either bring in food or serve at the funeral dinner. It was just, uh, from what I observed, there was a tremendous outpouring of love yesterday, and I want to thank you for that. If we could just give those people a round of applause, that would be great. Really appreciate it. It's, it's awesome. I want to share with you some more observations about yesterday as we go on in the message. But um, the message that I have to share with you today is not complicated. It is 
I was going to say it's short, but you might hold me to that. Uh, let's just say it's, it's simple. It, it's probably not anything that you haven't heard before, but I'm not concerned with whether or not we've heard it. I'm concerned with whether or not we're, we're doing it as a church. I want us to be encouraged today to do something uh, with the Word of God. I want to start uh, in 1 John chapter 3, 1 John 3, and just read verse 1 together. Hopefully you have your Bible. If not, you can follow along on the screen, make that clear for you. It says this, See what great love. God's, God's love for you is described as great. Amen? It's great love in the way that he gave his son to die on the cross for your sins. And I know sometimes we hear that and we just gloss over it. But I'm telling you, there was super affection that came from God when he gave us Jesus, his son, as a tremendous sacrifice. What great love. You might be sitting there this morning and you don't feel love. You don't feel loved by God. You don't feel important to God. And while that feeling might be real, I want you to understand that the reality of the word has to become greater in your life than your feeling. Whether you, whether you feel like it or not, whether you admit it or not, you are greatly loved by God. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. If you've made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you are a child of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen? We'll get a little worked up as we go on in the message today. I love how God chooses to reveal himself to us as Father because he could have chosen to reveal himself as our heavenly boss or celestial master or whatever form of superiority that he wanted to take, maybe emperor of the galaxies. Yet he, he chose to reveal himself as Father. And as our heavenly Father... He brings us into his family. What I love about the family of God, God's family, is that there are no second-class children. Amen? There are no black sheep in his family. You, you might have felt like, I was a black sheep before, but I want you to know that when you come into Christ's family, he washes you white as snow. He gives you, the Bible says, even the same righteousness that Jesus has. Being a part of his family means that we... We take on his name and we take on his righteousness. Now, throughout the New Testament, the family of God is also referred to as the body of Christ. Okay, so we're going to talk about those two titles synonymously. The family of God, the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. We'll look at a couple different verses that describe the family of God as the body of Christ. It says, now you are the body of Christ. You are. And each one of you is a part of it. So if you've put your faith in Christ, you are a part of the family of God. You are described in the New Testament as being a part of the body of Christ. If we back up a few verses in verse 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, Just as a body, the one, right? You have one body. Your body has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We're, they're, they're using this as an analogy for the body of Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free. We could go so far as to say male or females. We could say black or white or any other nationality. Okay, We were all given the one spirit to drink, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of, of many parts. So what we glean from these verses is that as members of the body of Christ, we first belong to Christ. He is the head of the body. Okay, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 29 and 30. It says this, After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for... Oh yeah, we're going to do that today. But they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church, for we are all members of of his body. So here's the thing. As, as members of Christ's body, we belong to him. Can you say amen? amen? But as members of his family or of his body, we also belong to one another. We also belong to one another. Can you say amen? amen. Say, I want to belong to Christ, but I'm not sure if I want to belong to you and you and you and you. I don't know if I want to do that. 
Okay, I got, enough, I got one family, that's enough problems, I'm not sure if I need another. But according to the word, it says that we belong not only to Christ, but we're members of one body, we're different parts of that body, and as a result, we belong to one another. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but families are wacky. <laughs> and if you're listening to somebody talk about their family, it doesn't take too long to find out that every family has an eccentric, I would have said crazy, an eccentric family member, right? Every family has the funny family member or the troubled family. You're thinking of people right now, okay? Hopefully you're not thinking of the troubled family member or the peacekeeping, well, you would call yourself the peacekeeping family member. Yet, all of those people and all of those personalities, regardless what they are, they're still all part of one family. This is also true with the family of God or the body of Christ. It's true. We're made up of different parts. There's different personalities, different gifts, different that. And God puts us all together. He's no respecter of persons. There's no second-class member. He makes us all apart. Now, I don't know if you know today that you're part of his family, but if you're here this morning, I believe that God has called you to be a part of his family, maybe through this local church, Open Bible Center. And in order for us to be an effective family, we have to recognize that not only we belong to him, but we also belong, whether we like it or not, to one another. Have you ever wondered what part of the body you are? You have different parts of your physical body, and if you were to compare your physical body with the body of Christ, I wonder how you would describe yourself. Maybe you think of yourself as being an eye. You're like a watchman, okay? You think you have discernment, or you have discernment, and you exercise that, and you're watching, and you're looking out over, and you're taking these things in, and there are people that function as eyes within the body of Christ. Maybe you're a leg. Maybe you're, you're strong, you're strong in Christ, and you're working to support the rest of the body, and it's like you're a, you're a pillar in the church, okay? Or maybe you're a foot, because everybody tells you that you're a heel anyway. It doesn't matter each part of the body. There'll be a lot of foot humor today, I can assure you. Each part of the body is meant to exist and to function. It belongs to one, okay, one body and the head of that body of Christ, but those parts of the body also belong to one another. They were meant to be connected. I believe that God equips a healthy church to emulate a healthy physical body. Every member is necessary, and every member is to work together for the benefit of the body as a whole. Now, with your physical body, there are certain internal systems that you have that just function. If you'd like to know more about these systems, you can talk to Jen Warden after the service. She is a biology teacher, and I'm sure she can affirm everything that I'm about to say. Thank you, Jen. Okay. So such systems as the respiratory system, right? You have a respiratory system. It's just working. You don't have to think about breathing. Say, thank goodness. No, thank God, because you're fearfully and wonderfully made, right? Although there are times that my iPhone, I have my iPhone connect connected to my iWatch, so if I get a text that comes in, I can look at my watch. If I get an email that comes in, I can look at my watch. I get a phone call that comes in, I can look at my watch, right? Sometimes I look at my watch and it's telling me to breathe. I'm like, I'll check my, am I, am I not breathing? Am I, am I not breathing deep enough? Okay, I'm just, this is annoying. I don't have time for this. I don't have time to breathe. Thank goodness there is a respiratory system that's taking care of that all on its own, right? You have a circulatory system. Right now, your blood is coursing through your veins, whether you're thinking about it or not. You have a digestive system, okay? And after lunch today, when you've slipped into a dessert coma, <laughs> and you have the chicken sweats or whatever is happening with you, and uh, I look over at you and I ask you, what are you thinking about? You're probably not going to be saying, I'm, I'm, I'm really focusing and concentrating on digesting all of this food right now. You don't have to do that you're probably thinking about what you're going to have for supper, all right? But you're, you, don't, you don't have to think about those systems that are already working. Even if your body, here's the thing, though. Even if your body was in a coma, your systems would still be functioning and you'd be alive, okay? Those systems would still be working. You'd be alive, but you wouldn't be living much of a life, would you? 
You'd be alive, but you'd not really be living. You'd be existing. Here's what I want to say about the body of Christ. The body of Christ has not just been called to exist. It has been called to move outside of its internal functions, and it does so by taking commands from the command center, and the head of the body is Christ Jesus. Amen? God has called the body of Christ to do more than just exist. He's called us to live. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. How, how is it that we should be experiencing this abundant life? Well, I believe that God has designed for us to experience it by being connected to him as father and being connected and part of a body. Your life is not going to... You're not going to live in the abundance that Jesus talked about if you're not connected to him and if we're not connected to one another. It doesn't work that way. That's not what you were called to be. You're not to, to, called to be an island unto yourself. You're called to be a part of the family of God, a member of Christ's body. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18 says, And he, Christ, is the head of the body, Amen? He's the mind. He's the mind center. He's the command center. The church, he is the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, thank you, Jesus, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. We see in this verse that Christ is the head. Amen? Christ is the head, and he's made us part of his body. Um, so today, instead of giving you three points, really what I want to do is give you three questions. I always encourage people to take notes just because I, I forget things all the time. So I'm constantly taking notes. I have literally probably 3,000 notes on my phone. And um, <clears throat> By taking those notes, writing these things down, you can later on just give the Lord an opportunity to help speak to you or ask you these questions, because I can ask you, but really my desire is for the Lord to ask you these questions this morning and then for us to be able to answer them. So I'll give you, instead of three points, three questions. Question number one is this. How is your connection with Christ? <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says he is the head. He is the command center for our body. And we need to be connected to him so that we can receive our marching orders from him. If our connection is not good, there's no way we're going to be able to hear what he's saying and then follow his commands. This last week, uh, I made a call to place an order for the chicken that we'll be eating today. And because I've had experience in doing that in the past, I always want to call early enough in the week because there's been times before they've said, we don't have that much chicken. We're not sure if we can order it and get it in, yada, yada, yada. So having a conversation, fortunately, they had the chicken and talking to this gal, very nice. It was, a conversation was going great. And then all of a sudden, our connection went bad. And I don't know if she could hear me, but I definitely could not hear her. And I felt bad because I had to ask her, what did you, I'm so sorry, what did you say? What did you, I asked her that at least five times, but I didn't think I was talking to a human being anymore. I thought I was maybe talking to like Charlie Brown's teacher or something. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was awful. I wanted to say, are you okay or did you fall into a giant vat of tapioca? Do we need to send emergency service? Because it was that, <clears throat> it was that bad. But it was, it was good enough for me to place the order, or so I thought, and uh, to get part of what she's saying. Now, part of what she said was, hey, you know what? If you want to pick up this chicken, you're going to have to come in and pay for it ahead of time because, I don't know, maybe that's probably good business practice. Maybe they've had people who didn't come to pick up their chicken. Now we got all this chicken. What are we going to do with it? Uh, you know? And so <clears throat> I was like, no problem. But apparently there might have been a window of time to come in and pay for it because by the time, it was a couple days later, I got over there still a couple days ahead of time. I got over there to pay for it. I talked to the girl, and she's like, oh, yeah, we don't have an order. Whoops. Okay. She's like, oh, no, we had an order. I remember seeing the order, but somebody must have thrown it away. I was like, um, if you find out who they are, could I also get their address? No, I'm just kidding. I didn't. <clears throat> so no problem. She wrote up the order. It was no big deal. Maybe there was a window of time. But all of a sudden, here's the thing. The point is, we had a bad connection. And because we had a bad connection, I was able to place my order. And sometimes we do that with God. We pray and we place our orders. But I want you to know there are 
orders and commands and things that God has to share back with us, and he wants us. The only way for us to have that is if we're connected to him, right? If we are a body of people that are, we need to be connected to one another, but if we're just connected to one another and we're not connected to him, then we're not going to be operating in the same manner. We may have all kinds of activity, but it'd be just like we're having a seizure or something. Because we're not moving in unison with the head of the body who is saying, here's what I've called you to do, here's how I want you to do it, and here's how I want you to execute it. So, say, Pastor, you say this all the time. You, if you get to know me, you'll hear me say this for the rest of my life. You, have, you need to be connected to Jesus. And the best way to do that is to spend time with him and his word, make his word a priority. I know you're busy. We're all busy. We're not going to be able to use that excuse in heaven. God, I was busy. God's going to say, I was busy too but I made time to send you my word, right? And now it was up to you to prioritize it. Prioritize the word, and in doing so, be connected to God, right? And God will give you his orders, he'll give you his adjustments, he'll give you his stipulations, he'll give you a window. Sometimes there's things that God wants to do, and he gives us a window of time in which to do it, not just for us to do, but when he gives us something to do, oftentimes he's not just doing something through us, he's doing something in us. We need to be connected to him to hear and let him do what that is and to not just hear it and then it'll be like an order and goes in one ear and out the other, but to say, yes, Lord, I hear you. Wow, that's when relationship comes to life, when you hear the Lord and you know the Lord has spoken to you and then you step into that word that he's given to you with obedience. That's, what he, that's, that's the type of connectivity that we need to have with Jesus. Not just a belief up here, but a relationship in which we're listening and receiving, not just placing orders, but receiving them and then living them out. Can you say amen? So that question again is, how is your connection with Christ? Now, if you're new to Christ, if you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we would love to lead you in prayer and to introduce you to Jesus and bring you into a relationship with him. We'd love to give you a Bible, teach you how to start using it, get you on the Life Journal, get you on you version. And we're not, we're not trying to program you. We just want to make it as easy as possible for you to start getting the word into your life. So if you have questions about that, please come and see me or one of the pastors or one of the elders. There's a lot of great people in this body you could talk to about getting you started, getting you connected with Jesus. Let's move on to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. It says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him. That's the goal. To be the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Here's question number two. How is your connection with others in the body of Christ? How is your connection with others in the body of Christ? When I look at Ephesians 4 and verses 15 and 16, I believe an unmistakable characteristic of having connection or being a part of a connected family is love. It's love. If you want to grow in connection, take the opportunities that God gives you to love. Uh, I saw that in action amongst the Lindgren family yesterday. And I want to brag about them for just a minute. I know they're probably uncomfortable with it, but I, I just, they, they do a great job of demonstrating love. So with regard to Martha, uh, they did a lot to take care of Martha, visiting her in the nursing home taking care of her home before it was sold while she was in the nursing home, taking care of bills, taking care of laundry. And you know what? They loved doing that. They didn't mind doing that. Was it always easy? No. But they did that with great attitudes because they loved Martha, right? But a lot of that burden fell on their family because they were the only local family that she had here. And that's of no fault to anybody else. But they took that on. So what I've seen... Um, at different times in the past is that when certain families are put in that situation where all the weight and all the burden is on them, when it actually comes time for the funeral of that loved one, it's, it's almost like they feel like they're owed something from everybody else. Does that make sense? That you can feel like, you know what, we did all this. But what I saw, I didn't see that attitude at all, but what I saw yesterday, not only at the funeral, but also at the funeral dinner, was I saw Pastor Buren and Jody and their children 
ministering to the other members of their family, even though they could have sat back and said, you know what, we, 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 we deserve to have people minister to us. We're going to minister to these people. What they did was take the opportunity to love. And it was so, just the different things that I saw happen yesterday in those, in those family members and even some of their own testimonies that came out of that, I believe that came out of an attitude that was ministered to them through Pastor Bieran and Joni said, nope, we're going to love. We're going to love. Even if somebody makes a, a wacky comment, we're going to love, we're going to love, we're going to love. And what that did was it brought connection. Amen? So with regard to our church, I believe that God has made us a part of his family so that we'd be connected to Christ and we'd be connected to one another. God wants you to be connected within this family. Open Bible is not huge. It's not, I, I wouldn't consider us to be a large church. We have a couple different services. and We had more people here earlier, and hopefully we'll all be able to be together today. But I would say this of our church. Our church is large enough that you're probably not going to have a personal relationship with everybody in the church. You're not going to get to talk to everybody today. I would encourage you to talk to somebody new that you haven't talked to before. But I believe that within our church, God, God's made us all a part of one body but we need to be connected to Christ, and then within our church, we need to be connected to one another. And I see us being connected in groups because we're not, we're not all going to have personal relationships with one another. We're all going to be able to take opportunities to love each other when those things arise. But I believe that God wants to put us into groups where we can take the opportunity to love and minister to one another and then to receive that love. To me, it seems like that's the way that God has designed the body to work. Because otherwise, we could work like an institution and we could say, well, we're going to have teams for this and teams for that. We will have some teams to do different things, but God wants you to be a part of a group. Now, I'm preaching this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to whet your appetite a little bit because, not for after service, but for ministry, okay? Because if you're not yet a part of a group, I believe God wants you to be one. Be a part of one. What do we have? Well, well, okay, if you said today, how can I start being part of a group? Well, one way is you could come on Wednesday night. We have a couple different adult classes that are meeting on Wednesday night. We have youth group. We have kids' church. You could be a part of a group like Pastor Bjorn has a group and just serving with the kids in kids' church on Wednesday night. They're a, they a strong, small group. They're connected. They do ministry together. So that's a type of group. Now, I know, and I'm sorry, okay, that um, we, we don't have enough groups in our church for everybody to be part of a group right now but that's where you come in because we need to we we need to have greeting groups and be those teams working together we need to have life journal groups we need to have life groups we need to have sunday school groups why because god wants us to be intentional about connection and he wants us see i think it would be better if we're connected that way than just being an institution with programs and so, okay, we have a hospital visitation team and then we send somebody from the hospital visitation team up to the hospital to visit somebody even though they've never met them, never talked to them, never had any relationship with them whatsoever. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. In some circumstances, would we do that? Yeah, maybe the person's new to the church. Maybe they're, they, they, they don't have a wide circle of friends. So, of course, we want to help meet that need. But I'm, I'm seeing how we have to function as a body, not as an institution. All right? Can I just talk to you candidly for a minute? I don't want to I don't want to offend anybody cuz this is that's not that's not my heart. I I just want us to function the way that God designed us to function. And I see sometimes what we've done is we've replaced relationships that we're supposed to have with programs. Okay? Um let's say for example somebody needs to move. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. We don't have a moving ministry. In my 20 years of pastoring, I've never been able to find that person. Lord, send me someone with a big truck and a heart to move. I don't know if, I may not have enough faith to pray that prayer. I'm not sure. But we don't have that. So what happens is somebody says, I need help moving, okay? And of course we want to help. But I think it would make more sense if there were people that saw that need that were a part of that group and that connectedness. Now, if they can't, okay, if they're part of a group where they can't do that or there's a disability involved, no problem, totally understand but when it's a person that just, they're not connected, they're not connected with anybody, and then that need falls, what happens is there might be a part of the body that's being used to do that rather to do what it was meant to do, right? 
But if each one of us are in connection with one another and the parts of the body are working in the function and the form that they were designed in, the body is going to be healthy and the ministry is going to be effective. I am i don't know if you're like this, but... So, there's, I, I got a lot of things wrong with me, but one of the things is... And you call I don't know, it's, it's pride or something. I don't know what it is, but... I'm not super comfortable with people doing things for me. I'm just, I'm not good at that. I'm sorry, I'm not. So I struggle sometimes to receive compliments or to receive help or do things like that. And uh, um, I'm not open, I'm, I'm open to changing on that, but I'm just being honest with you. And so a lot of times it's easier. I, I feel much more comfortable helping others than I do receiving help. But I, I can say this the people that I feel the most comfortable receiving help from are the people that I know love me and are connected to me. And it makes it easier for me to receive that. Amen? What am, I'll just boil all this down by saying, I believe God wants us to be connected to Jesus. If we don't have that connection, we're not going to be moving in the direction he wants. But being a part of his body means we're not only connected to him, we're also connected to one another. We have to take that connection seriously. So seriously that we'd say, God, whatever group you want me to be a part of, I'll be a part of it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work as your pastor to, be, to help be a part of presenting more groups that you can be involved in. And the way that you can help me is if you sense the Lord saying to you, I want you to lead a group, then would you come to me? and let me know that, because then I would help you get people plugged into your group. Does that make sense? It's something that we need to work on, but what I sense is um, that God, the, the ministry that he's call, calling us to do, we will not be able to do it if we're not connected in the way that he wants us to be. We, we need to be connected so that we can carry out that mission, mission of loving and, and taking on those opportunities that he has for us. Okay, let's move on to question number three. Let me read a verse before I do that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, we'll go back to that again. It says, From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Here's the third question. What is your connection to work, or we'll describe work in this sense as ministry? What is your connection to work or ministry? Ministry with regard to the church. Now, I want, mo I want many of our ministries not to happen within the church. We need to, we need to have ministries happening outside of the church, okay? So it's, it's both. But remember earlier I asked what part of the body, if you thought about yourself as a part of the body, what, what part of the body would you see yourself as being? This morning, I want you just for the moment and the sake of illustration to pretend that you are a toe. <laughs> Maybe I have some toe heads in here, right? We got any toes? Okay, you are a toe. Turn to your neighbor say, you're a toe. You're a toe. Did that feel good? You may need to check your spirit this morning. If that felt. Okay, so here's the thing. As a toe, as a toe, you are going to operate more closely with other parts of the foot. As a toe, you are essential to the whole body, right? But you're going to be hanging out with the foot. You'll probably spend more time with the foot than you do with the ear. All right? Unless you're like in a Pilates class or something. <laughs> okay? You have respect for one another. But as a toe, God has called you to be a toe. God has called you to walk out life with other members of the body, specifically the foot. You're to work together with the foot. You're to hang out with the foot. You might, you might cut a rug together. All right? You might even jam together. It's a foot joke. Toe jam. Never mind. All right. God has called you to bear with one another in your foot group to even be willing to walk things out with the Achilles heel of the group. So I, uh, I recently injured my toe, one of my toes, and I was, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of old now, so I'm like, how did I do that? You ever do that? Like you hurt some part of your body, like I have no idea how I did that. And I got to thinking about it, and I, and I realized, oh, yeah. I injured my toe while playing Can Jam. You guys know what Can Jam is? Can Jam is an outdoor game, right? And uh, basically what it is is 
you and your partner stand about 15 feet apart, 20 feet apart, something like that, and you both have a can in front of you. Actually, it's more like a five gallon, about the size of a five gallon bucket. And the way that you score points is you take a Frisbee and you throw it towards the can. If you hit the can, you get points for that. Uh, you, your partner, as you're throwing it, your partner can actually hit the Frisbee and knock it into the can and score even more points. It's amazing, right? So I thought, oh man, I hurt my toe while playing can jam, unbelievable. Consequently, I also learned that it's called that because while playing, you can, jam your, you can jam your toe, you can jam your finger, you can jam your wrist. There's all kinds of things you can jam while you're playing that game, right? So Pastor Andy, how bad was it? Uh, you know, was it sprained, was it broken, dislocated? I don't know. I know it was dark blue. And I know it hurt kind of bad, right? Did you go to the doctor, did you have the doctor check that out? No, I didn't do that, I did that. I went to the doctor like in 91, so kind of been there, done that. <laughs> Most of the time now I just use like duct tape and super glue and things like that. <laughs> and I believe in healing. And so, uh, but what I noticed is the rest of my foot was receiving commands from the command center to say, hey, uh, you got to help this dude out. <laughs> no more flip flops, bro. Don't, not, not especially not playing can jam, but you're going to have to lay out. I love wearing, I wear flip-flops like house slippers. And no more flip-flops, right? You can keep a shoe on, keep a sock on, you need some extra support. Tape that thing together. The rest of my foot and toes and all had to work together to kind of minister to that and to protect that and to prevent further injury. Do you understand what I'm saying? My body had to work together to care and prevent anything else from happening. See, I believe that there is a ministry that God has called each one of us to work together in. And it's, it won't be the whole church, okay? but it'll be your foot team, right? your foot squad. I firmly believe that there's a certain type of growth that happens only when serving together. And serving together in ministry makes ministry so enjoyable. You know, just a week ago, last Sunday, we were able to hear some awesome testimonies about hockey camps. It's hard to believe that was just a week ago. But as I was sitting there, I, 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 got, I felt a little jealous. I really wasn't able to be involved as much, in, hardly at all, in hockey camp this year as I was in your past. And, and, and hockey camp is not easy. It's hard. There's a lot of work and everything that goes into it. But when you hear the goodness, the fruit, nine people being saved and testimonies and these things, it makes you makes you want to be a part of it. That's what serving together is all about. Amen? And it's about being connected to God. It's about being connected to one another. It's about taking those opportunities to love when they arise and doing it. And some of the best groups I've ever been a part of, we did not assemble to have fun. We assembled to work. But God made it so enjoyable. Amen? And I believe that God has a, has a work team for each one of us. I want to close by saying this. Open Bible is not a business. We have not been called to be a business. We are not a program. We are not a service. We are not a system. We will use all those things. I'm not against those things, but that's not who we are. We are the body of Christ. That's who we are. That's who he says we are. Your children, you're a part of it. And I'm asking today, you today, are you a part of it? Are you really connected to him? Are we moving in the same direction? Do you really look at your life and say, That's my life doesn't just belong to me, it belongs to him, and it belongs to these people that, I've, I've, that are part of the body of Christ? Am I a part of a group where I'm serving and using the gifts that God has given me? We are called to be a spiritual family with Christ as the head. We're called to be connected to him, to be connected to one another, and to minister together. And all of that connection will lead to life and to growth. We're not, called to be, we're not called to be a body on life support. And my concern is now and moving forward that there, there will be churches that exist as if they're just living on life support. We're not called to exist. We're called to grow and to mature and to reach and to serve and to love because that's what a healthy body does. He wants our body to be healthy. Amen. Christ has called us to himself and to one another, to life, to growth, and to maturity. 
Are you connected to Christ? Are you connected to a group? I'm gonna, we're going to find more opportunities for you to be able to do that. And if the Lord puts that on your heart, please come to me because you'll be a part of helping build that. Are you connected to serving with a group? This is what God has called us to. Would you go ahead and take your communion elements this morning? Take those out. You can peel, peel back that first layer. talk about the bread this wafer for just a minute Lord we want to thank you today for making us a part of your body thank you father thank you father there was nothing that we could do to come into your family except trust your son as lord and savior thank you for the grace thank you jesus for your body that was broken for us i pray in jesus name that we would not just be satisfied with just existing but we would do more by being connected to you thank you for your body that was broken that we might be connected to one another as a part of your family lord we don't do this lightly we remember your sacrifice and we look forward to your coming again. In Jesus' name, let's take and eat. You could go ahead and take the cup and peel back that next layer. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you today. We thank you for this cup that represents your blood and how your blood was poured out. A serious sacrifice, a serious price that was paid. We could never pay ourselves. You did it for us. You did it because you loved us. You saw the opportunity for our need, Father, and you met it. Jesus, you stepped in in obedience, and you became the head of this body that is your church. Now I pray, Father, that we would be not only connected to you, but connected to one another. Let us not live our lives unto ourselves but live it for you, live it within the body. Lord God, I pray that we would grow in Jesus' name. Lord, that we would grow in life more abundantly in Jesus' name as we are willing to be a part and to serve. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do today. Thank you for your blood. Let's take and drink. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over everybody today. Lord, thank you so much. For all that you've done, I want to thank you for my family members today, the family members, the spiritual family that you have placed me in. Pray your blessing on them today. God, I pray that as we fellowship, that we would look outside of ourselves and our own comfortability and even our own relationships and be willing to reach out to one another and to take opportunity to get to know each other and to love each other and to bless each other. Pray that you would begin to establish, Lord, groups and opportunities to serve, but just have your way in us today. May we reflect your love. May we look for those of our brothers and sisters that just need, need help today, need an encouragement today. I pray that there wouldn't be a group of workers and servers and a group that's being served. I pray that you'd make us one body, serving and loving one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.